Welcome back. Today I'd like to show you how to use FHIR2 for modeling proteins. So the first thing you're going to need for FHIR2 is your sequence. So there are several databases such as NCBI you could get sequences from, you can get sequences from Unipro, you can get them from Ensemble, um, several different places. But at any rate, let's go ahead and pick a protein of interest. So first thing we want to do is drop down here to protein and, oh, I don't know. Let's say this is my loci of interest. Okay, nice little uncharacterized protein, but we've seen in some other uh, homologs that we've got uh, uh, ILV, which is an acetolactate synthase large subunit function. I'm gonna go ahead and get my FASTA sequence. Go ahead and copy that. Go over to FHIR2. Now just a little bit about FHIR. FHIR does protein modeling based on sequence homology. So it's going to take your amino acid sequence and it's going to compare it to the sequences of other proteins that have been characterized already, um, whose structure is already known. And it's going to basically Frankenstein a model based off of small sections of homology um, to those already established sequences. So at any rate, so here we go, we've entered our FASTA. We can then put in a job description if we'd like to. We can put in an email address, etc. Now down here you have an interesting mode. Normally, you click normal, that's the default, and it gives you about uh, an hour before you'll get your model back. However, this is not publication quality image. If you want a publication quality image, you would have to click intensive. Um, usually for experiments, I'll run normal just because it's faster. And then when I know for a fact I want to use a particular um, model for a publication, I'll rerun it in intensive mode. So for here, I'm actually going to run this twice. I'm going to run it the first time as normal. Okay, so. Yeah, it's going to take some time to run, and just so you can appreciate the difference, I'm going to reload Fire in another browser. Okay, well, of course I could really help if I spelled it right. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to do the same thing in intensive mode so you can take a look at what that looks like. And so as you can see, this is going to take some time, and so I will touch back with you when this is done. All right, so we have let the program run overnight, and so I want to show you how the results compare between normal and intensive mode with FHIR2. So as you see here, this is my normal mode. It's available for 30 days if you go back to the website that they provide you. Um, you can download the sequence in case you need to verify what you actually put into the program to get your results, etc. So if we go ahead and scroll down, here is a picture of the protein. I can right click on that, I can save the image as, etc. But remember this is not publication quality, and so you do get stuck with the black background because it is in normal mode. Over on the side here, we can see what my top template information is. So if I click on this, it'll give me more information on the particular template itself, um, etc. But as you can see here, it's coming from an uh, oxidoreductase from a pyruvate dehydrogenase uh, that's coming out of E. coli. So this was my top match and it's got a 96% coverage. So out of the 476 residues, 96% of them were able to be modeled with a very high confidence. So that is important information. As I scroll down, now I can see how each individual template lines up. So what you'll notice is the top templates um, are on top. We have very good confidence, but notice how my percent ID is 22% from this model from E. coli. Uh, this one's a 21% from a lactobacillus planetarium. Here's a 21% from some sort of a... Uh, um, 
Aerococcus, etc. Now remember when I mentioned earlier that Bayer is doing this from sequence homology, and the idea is that it's Frankensteining the best possible model from already established uh, 3D structures. So here is the 3D, or here are, I should say, the 3D structures um, with their individual ID, and then here we can see where in the protein that ID occurs. So as we scroll down, we'll see the different templates that made up our final product. And so we can have quite a few of these. You get the idea. Okay. Once I get down here, I have a very fun feature that was recently added, and that is going to be 3D ligand. So 3D ligand site is now connected to fire, so whatever you put into fire, assuming it has a high enough confidence, will also be sent to 3D ligand. Well, 3D ligand takes your model, and it will then... Um, compare it to all known substrates, whether that's a protein substrate, a, a chemical substrate, etc., and it will try to characterize the active site of the protein for you, along with give you information on anything that might bind that active site. Okay. Oh, here it is. So, you know, here's my submission then to 3D ligand. It's telling me my predicted active excuse me, predicted binding site are going to be these proteins, or sorry, these amino acids at residues, blah, 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 how tight your active site is. Here's the predicted binding partners. So I have a TPP and a magnesium, um, which then here's where they, the sources they figured this information out from. Here's a nice little picture that I can also do the save as if I want to. I can also rotate this thing and do a bunch of fun things. But notice my protein is in gray and what is my substrate is then colored in these blue ribbons, et cetera, et cetera. So I can turn those on, turn them off, do all sorts of things to get the picture the way that I want to. Um, I can also change the background here should I want to etc. So 3D ligand is a nice um, addition, assuming you have good enough confidence in the model, which, well, FHIR predicts that for you. So then how does this change if I'm using intensive mode? Well, here I have the same protein that we did before in intensive mode. So this is going to be your publication quality image. You're going to have a confidence key, which will give you similar information to what we saw before. So notice how here, overall, I had 96% coverage with 100% confidence. Well, here I have 98% coverage with over 90% confidence, and you can even go into more detail with that if you want. You can see where within the protein I have the highest confidence. And then I can download high-res images, whether that's a black background or a white background. Most papers will require the white background. Similarly, if I scroll down, here are all the templates that I had um, from before. No surprise there. And then if I scroll even further down than that, I can then take a look at the 3D ligand site. So you've got the idea. Um, so keep this information in mind. It's very helpful for when you are modeling proteins. Uh, my lab does a bunch of work with bacterial hypothetical proteins with antibiotic resistance. So, you know, this is a, a very handy tool. You just grab your sequence, throw it in, and come back a few hours later. Um, so hopefully this is helpful for you, and I look forward to your results from FHIR and 3D ligand site soon. Have a great day.